Good morning, friends, and welcome to another day of online learning. We're going to start our day with our pledges. So if everybody will stand up real straight, take your right hand and put it over your heart, we will begin with the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ready? My country tis of thee. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. Great job. Let's move to the Christian flag. Right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. And let's move to the Bible. So get your Bible hands ready. Begin. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. The B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, Bible. Good job, friends. Now, let's put our hands together for the Lord's Prayer. Bow your heads. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, let's have a special prayer. Ready? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We ask you to bless our families and bless those who we love who are not with us. We pray that you keep us safe and healthy and help us each day to learn more about you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to get ready to start our day. Hi, friends. Welcome to another math lesson with Miss Edwards. Today's math lesson is something new for all of you. We're going to be talking about head and finger addition. Now, I know we've counted on our fingers. We've counted bears. We've counted frogs. We've counted all kinds of things. Uh, today, we're going to do it a little bit differently. So you can see I have some math problems up here. And you can see I'm wearing a headband with a number on it. Do you know what that number is? Can you guess? Jimmy? Jacob? It's the number six. And we're going to need that for the first problem. This says six plus four equals. Now, instead of putting up six fingers and then four more are making dots, we're going to put the six in our head. We all know how to count to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got the six here. We're going to start with the six. So we're going to start with six, not with one. Six plus four. Six plus four. So we're going to start with the six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. Six plus four equals ten. Okay. Now I'm going to take off the six. And I'm going to put another number in my head. You can see our next problem is four plus three. So... I'm going to put the 4 in my head. And that lets me know I'm going to start counting with the number 4, the first number. 
4 plus 3. 4 plus 3. 4, 5, 6, 7. That's right. 4 plus 3 equals 7. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the 4 out of my head. And I'm going to put the 6 back in. Are you ready? Okay. Now, remember, we're starting with 6. Not with 1. We're starting with 6. So, 6 plus 3 equals 6 plus 7, 8, 9. Right. 6 plus 3 is 9. All right. Now, I'm going to take the 6 off. Can you see my next problem? 8 plus 2. So what number am I going to put in my head? The first number. The big number. I'm going to put 8 in my head. Now I know how to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to start with 8. 8 plus 2. So I hold up my two fingers and I start with 8. 8, 9, 10. Right. So 8 plus 2 equals 10. Now, all these have been to 10, and we're going to try something a little bit harder. Okay? Take the 8 out of my head. What number am I going to put in my head? Do you see it? A little bit crooked there. It's the number 9. 9. So, I'm going to start counting with 9. Okay? So, you think in your head. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm starting with a 9, and this says 9 plus 2. So I have head and finger. I have the 9 in my head and two fingers. 9, 10, 11. Right. 9 plus 2 equals 11. Now, I have a couple of challenges for you. I'm going to get ready for those. Hold on one minute. And just like magic, my challenges are up there. So these ones are a little bit harder. The first challenge says 8 plus 5. So I need to take the 9 out of my head and I get the 8. Now you really don't have to stick the number on your head just so you can see what's in my head. But you got to think the number in your head. I'm starting with 8, so I'm not going to go backwards. I'm going to start counting at 8. 8 plus 5. So, I start with 8. 8. What did you get? Tell me, what did you get? Michael, what did you get? Julian, Jimmy, are you counting with me? Let's do it together. See if you were right. 8 plus 5. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 8 plus 5 is 13. Now, here's a biggie, okay? Here's our big one. You can see the problem. 10 plus 4. So, put the 10 in your head. You're going to be starting counting with 10. Not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Start with 10. 10 plus 4. 10 plus 4. I want you to do it first. 10. What'd you get? Are you counting with me, Zaya? What'd you get? What about you, Keithy? You counting? 10 plus 4. Ready? 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, right, 10 plus 14. So, your challenge at home today, if you choose to accept it, will be to come up with five more problems. Try to, maybe your, your mom or dad can help you, so maybe the answers don't go any higher than 15, but practice putting the number in your head and the other ones on your fingers. 
and see if you can come up with the right answer. I look forward to seeing your answers, friends. And remember, I love you and I miss you and I can't wait to work together. Keep practicing your math. Bye-bye. Hi friends, welcome to another story time with Miss Edwards. Today's story is called Little Red. It is retold by Pam Schiller, retold because she didn't make up the story, she's just telling it in a different way. So this story is similar to Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, Make sure you can see him. Once upon a time in a town not far away, there lived a sweet little girl and her mother. The little girl's mother made her daughter a beautiful hat from red wool. It suited the little girl so well that she wore it every day. For that reason, everyone called her Little Red. Do you have something that you really like to wear? A favorite hat, a favorite shirt, favorite pair of shoes? Me too. One day, her mother told Little Red that her grandmother was sick in bed with a cold, not the coronavirus. She handed her a basket to take to her grandmother. In the basket, there was a jar with soup, fruit, and bread. Little Red set out immediately to go to her grandmother, who lived across town. To get there, she had to go through the woods. Now, immediately, that means she's going to do it right away, right? Not wasting time. On her way, she met with a wolf. The wolf asked Little Red where she was going. Not knowing if the wolf was dangerous, she answered, I am going to see my grandmother, who lives behind the movie theater. Well, said the wolf, and I'll go see her too. I'll go this way, and you go that way, and we'll see who gets there first. Now, should you tell a stranger where you are going or really even talk to a stranger? No. Uh-oh. Little Red took her time. She stopped to smell the pretty dandelions. She listened to the singing and the chirping of the birds. She lay down and watched the clouds dance across the sky. Little Red loved the way the sun felt on her face. She sat down on a rock and ate one of the apples her mother had placed in the basket. The crisp, tart taste of the fruit filled her mouth with the nicest sensations. Now, wasn't she supposed to go immediately? Does this look like immediately? I don't think so. The wolf instead ran as fast as he could and since he also took the shortest path he arrived at grandmother's house well ahead of little red he knocked on the door tap 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 who's there cried grandmother from her bed it's me little red replied the wolf disguising his voice grandmother was delighted to see her granddaughter she was delighted that her grandmother, her granddaughter, had come to see her. She said, come in, sweet child, without even looking out the window to make sure it was her granddaughter. Now, do we just let somebody in the door because they say they're supposed to be there? Mm -mm, no. The wolf opened the door and immediately grabbed grandmother, tied her up with the belt of her robe, and tossed her in the closet. He then took one of her nightgowns, put it on, and climbed into her bed. He anxiously awaited the arrival of Little Red. After some time, Little Red knocked at the door. Tap, tap, tap. Who's there? cried the wolf 
again, disguising his voice. Disguising his voice means he's trying to sound like somebody that he isn't. He's trying not to sound like himself. He's trying to trick somebody. Little Red heard the big voice of the wolf. Hearing the big voice of the wolf was worried. She thought to herself, that cold must have made grandmother's voice hoarse. Kind of like Miss Edwards. It's your, it, it is your granddaughter, Little Red. The wolf cried out to her, softening his voice as much as he could. Come in, sweet child. Now, she looks worried, doesn't she? I think if I wasn't sure if, if it was safe to go in, you don't go in. Little Red opened the door and headed straight to her grandmother's bedside. As she got close to the bed, she was frightened. Her grandmother didn't even look like herself. The cold had made her eyes look strange, and her nose was several times its size. Thinking that her grandmother's ears must also be stopped up, she moved closer and said in a loud voice, Grandmother, you don't look like yourself. What big eyes you have. All the better to see you with, my dear. Thinking her grandmother might not be able to see her very well, Little Red moved in a little closer. She noticed her grandmother's sweet powder smell was missing. Grandmother, you don't smell like yourself. It is the eucalyptus I use for my cold, my dear. Little Red then reached for her grandmother's hand, but the wolf's paw didn't feel like her grandmother's soft hand. It was rough and coarse. Immediately, Little Red let go. She moved in a little closer and surveyed her grandmother's face more carefully. Grandmother, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you with, my dear. Now, at this point, Little Red should have known Something was not right. Grandmother, what big teeth you have. All the better to eat you up, growled the wolf. As he jumped from the bed and attempted to grab Little Red, Little Red jumped away in the nick of time. Thankfully, the wolf, in his haste, got all tangled up in Grandmother's nightgown. Haste means he's in a hurry. He tripped and fell flat on the floor, bumping his head as he hit the ground, and he was knocked out. Little Red pulled her cell phone from the pocket of her cape and called 911. After she told the operator what had happened, she began to look for her grandmother. She glanced around the room. Her grandmother was nowhere in sight. Do you remember where her grandmother was? Little Red stood and stood still and listened quietly in hopes of hearing her grandmother. And oh, what was that? She was sure she heard someone knocking. She used her ears to follow the sound and ended up by grandmother's closet. She opened the door and there was grandmother. Little Red untied her, hugged her, and helped her back to the bed. As Little Red watched the animal obedience school officer haul the wolf out to the wagon, she thought to herself, I sure learned an important lesson today. I will always trust my senses. That wolf didn't sound like my grandmother. He didn't look like my grandmother. He didn't smell like my grandmother. And he didn't feel like my grandmother. He was an imposter. My senses told me that. An imposter means he was somebody pretending to be someone else. Now, the author of this version, Pam Schiller, she lives in Cypress, Texas. So she lives here in Texas. And remember, I said that she retold the story. She didn't make up the story of Little Red Riding Hood. She just told it in a different way. And Diana Magnuson was the illustrator. She lives in Michigan. Remember, the illustrator draws the pictures. And here's that big old scary wolf. He is scary looking, isn't he? All right, friends. Thank you for joining me for another story time. And I want you to remember...
I love you and I miss you. And I can't wait till we're together again. Bye, friends. Okay, friends, we're going to continue praise and worship with He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. Are you ready? He's got the whole world in His hands. 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 He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the little bitty babies in his hands. He's got the little bitty babies in his hands. He's got the little bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Thanks for singing with me. Edwards. Today's video is going to be a little different. I'm using my computer and we're not going to be doing story time. Today we're going to work on our high frequency words. Now those are the four words that Miss Edwards put on the big board on the focus wall that we went over every morning. Now that we've gone over all 25, we're going to review those here. I'm going to hold up the card. I'm going to give you about three seconds to I want you to say the word out loud and then I'm going to say the word. Ready? The. And some people might say the. Like. Sorry. You. On. And. Oops, sorry about that. At. Am. And. A. We. Can. Is. In. My. So. Me. I. See. Go. No. Do. Two. He. Now, if you didn't know all of them, you can go ahead and review them now and watch this part of the video again. 
friends. I thought I was doing this all together in one video, but Ms. Edwards isn't quite an expert on how to work this recording device yet. So the second part of our phonics today, I want you to put all your high frequency flashcards in front of you. I'm going to pick five and hold them up one at a time. I want you to find the card that matches the one that I'm holding up. Then we're going to say it and we're going to use it in a sentence. Ready? Find this word. You can see it's spelled S-E-E. -E. Look at all your cards. Can you find this word? If you found it, hold it up. Good job. This word is C. C. I wish I could see all my friends face to face. C. Can you use the word C in a sentence? I see. Look around. What do you see right now? Good job. Now the next word is this one. Can you find it in front of you? It's spelled M-Y. This word is my. I am in my living room. This is my marker. Can you use the word my in a sentence? This is my light. Okay, good job. The next word I want you to find is this one. Can you find it in your flashcards in front of you? Look, look, look. It's a little word, W-E. Did you find it? This word is we, we. We are going to the store. We like to ride our bicycles. Can you use the word we in a sentence? We like. Did you use it? Good job. The next word is this one. This is the word that puts things together. It's called a conjunction, but that's kind of a big kid word. This word puts things together. It's spelled A-N-D. Did you find it? This word is and. Uh, Zaya and Skylar like to dance. Jimmy and Michael like to play basketball. Jacob and Keithy like to build with the Lego. Can you use the word and in a sentence? Good job. The next word is this one. It's a little bit longer. See if you can find it. This word is like. I like. To paint. What do you like to do? Can you use it in a sentence? I like. Good job. Now if you don't have your pencil and paper in front of you, your parents might want to pause the video while you go get it. So now I want you to take a piece of paper like this. Make sure you put your name on the top because we know the first thing we put on our paper is our name. And I would like you to pick three of the words in front of you. It doesn't have to be the three I have. And I'd like you to write each of them three times each. After you've done this, your parents going to take a picture of you like this with your paper. And they're either going to text it to me or email it to me so I know that you did your work. Thanks for listening, friends. And adios. Hi friends, welcome to Storytime with Miss with Edwards. <laughs> Today's story is called The Doorbell Ring by Pat Hutchins. Now, 
Ma has made a dozen delicious cookies. You know how many a dozen is? Wow. That should be plenty for the two children. But then the doorbell rings and rings and rings. Will we be able to share all the cookies? Let's find out. I've made some cookies for tea, said Ma. Good, said Victoria and Sam. We're starving. That means you're really, really hungry. Share them between yourselves, said Ma. I made plenty. Now, remember I told you she made a dozen, which is 12. So, if there's two kids, let's see. That's six each, said Sam and Victoria. They look as good as Grandma, said Victoria. They smell as good as Grandma, said Sam. No one makes cookies as good as Grandma, said Ma. As the doorbell rang. It was Tom and Hannah from next door. Come in, said Ma. You can share the cookies. Now I wonder how many cookies will each kid get. That's three each, said Sam and Victoria. They smell as good as your grandma's cookies, said Tom. And they look as good, said Hannah. Now, they all decided to share, didn't they? They didn't complain. They just shared. No one makes cookies like Grandma, said Ma. And the doorbell rang. It was Peter and his little brother. Come in, said Ma. You can share the cookies. More friends. That's two each, said Victoria and Sam. They look as good as your grandma, said Peter, and smell as good. Nobody makes cookies like grandma, said Ma. And what happened? The doorbell rang. It was Joy and Simon with their four cousins. Come in, said Ma. You can share the cookies. So let's see how many people are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a lot of people. That's oh twelve. That's one each, said Sam and Victoria. They smell as good as your grandma, said Joy. And they look as good, said Simon. No one makes cookies like Grandma, said Ma. And the doorbell rang. And rang. Oh dear, said Ma, as the children stared at the cookies on their plates. Maybe you better eat them before we open the door. No, we'll wait, said Sam. It was Grandma with an enormous tray of cookies. How nice to have so many friends to share them with, said Grandma. It's a good thing that I made a lot. And no one makes cookies like Grandma, said Ma. And the doorbell rang. Do you think maybe it was more friends? It might have been. Now, did they complain about sharing? No, at the end there was 12 people. So instead of six cookies or, or four cookies or three cookies or two cookies, Everybody only got one cookie, and they were happy to share. All right, friends. Thank you for joining me for another story time. And remember, I love you, and I miss you, and I can't wait till I can read stories to you in the classroom. All right.
Bye-bye.